when the computer came on the scene solving science problems? Did we go running for the hills? Did we say this is the end of the world? Did we say, oh my gosh, no. We embraced it. We brought our own ingenuity to it to see what else it could do for us. Since then, it beat our best chess players. Did the world come to an end? I don't think so. It beat us at Jeopardy, which involves culture. And how nimble are you? Do you know what culture means and how it comes together to form new information compared with previous information? Did the world come to an end? No. So now it can write your term paper. You know what we should do? Get it to write the stuff that nobody else wants to write. Get it to write the stuff that no one signs their name to. Let it write travel brochures. Nobody ever signed their name to those. But let it do all the things we don't want to do. That's how I see every new advance in computing. I'm going to say it's a computing advance. You're going to call it AI? Fine. Artificial intelligence, also known as AI, is not as scary as people tend to believe. In fact, the fear surrounding AI today mirrors the skepticism that people once held towards computers in the 1990s. Back then, personal computers were becoming more accessible and people were concerned about their implications. Some feared that computers would take away jobs, erode personal privacy, or even lead to a loss of human connection. Yet, over time, computers have become an integral part of our lives, enhancing productivity, connecting people across the globe, and opening up countless new opportunities. Similarly, AI today is generating concerns about automation and job displacement. However, history shows that as technology advances, new jobs and opportunities arise. The remarkable potential of AI lies in its ability to tackle problems across diverse fields such as healthcare, climate science, and education. AI excels in processing extensive datasets, recognizing patterns, and facilitating researchers in achieving revolutionary breakthroughs. While AI is undoubtedly proficient in addressing humanity's most pressing challenges, it also raises concerns about its potential to pose a threat to humanity, even though the actual outcome may be quite the opposite. There'll be a day AI is driving your car. Let's just call it a really advanced computer. Great! It could go 150 kilometers an hour down the street with very close spacing because it has instant reflexes that you don't. And if it wants to change lanes, it could tell the other cars, could you park where? Because I'm about to change lanes. How many accidents occur because people don't see what's happening where they, because there's a blind spot. There are no blind spots. They could drive 150 miles an hour in dense fog because they don't rely on visible light. Let it happen, bring it on. And at least in the United States, it'll save 40,000 lives a year. What do we do when a computer-driven car kills 5,000 in a year from errors in software code or it's a bug or it's a, a test case that has never been seen, yet it saved 45,000 lives? What do you do about that? No one writes an article about the person who didn't die because they would have been killed that night by a drunk driver. Nobody writes that story. They write the story about who does die. So that number 6,000, everyone will be up in arms and they'll want to get rid of self-driving cars because they don't see the full up statistics of it. And I don't think the transition will be easy or smooth, but that number will go down because planes don't crash anymore. Not really. Why? Because I know in America, the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, investigates every single plane crash every single one and they find out how and why it happened and a new rule shows up for all subsequent takeoffs and landings. That's why you can't carry lithium ion batteries, okay, in, in the cargo. No, because that took down a plane and they know why and they investigated it and so all the reasons why it used to happen don't happen anymore. That's the future and that's what I see. Artificial intelligence is poised to revolutionize the automotive industry by significantly enhancing the safety and efficiency of self-driving cars. This transformative technology promises to usher in a new era of transportation, offering numerous benefits that will ultimately make our roads safer. One of the most compelling aspects of AI in self-driving cars is its ability to process an immense amount of data in real time. Equipped with advanced sensors, cameras, and radar systems, self-driving vehicles can capture a 360-degree view of their surroundings. AI algorithms then analyze this data with lightning speed, detecting objects, pedestrians, and other vehicles, as well as assessing road conditions, traffic signals, and weather patterns. 
This level of situational awareness surpasses human capabilities, making AI-equipped cars highly adept at avoiding accidents. AI also enables predictive analysis and proactive decision-making. Self-driving cars can anticipate potential hazards and take corrective actions well before a human driver would even react. For example, if an AI system detects sudden braking by a car several vehicles ahead, it can adjust the speed and trajectory of the self-driving car to maintain a safe following distance, reducing the risk of collisions. AI's ability to continuously learn and improve through machine learning algorithms is another crucial factor in enhancing self-driving car safety. These systems refine their driving skills over time, incorporating data from millions of miles driven by various autonomous vehicles. This collective learning results in increasingly refined and safe driving behavior. But what if AI falls into the possession of a government with malicious intent? It's like the hydrogen bomb. Why would you grant access to the hydrogen bomb of a crazy person? You just wouldn't. Here's a computer that can control other computers, but you don't want it to control the computer that has the finger on the switch. So you put in firewalls or whatever we do today that prevents bad forces from operating on powerful sources of energy and influence. So I see that now we want to perhaps redouble the energy invested in how to tame that. And that was in that recent letter that was signed by so many that said we should stop our investigation of AI until we catch up with it. I think that's naive in the sense that you're not going to stop curiosity in the world. It's not going to happen. Yeah, you could stop it over here, but is that going to stop China or, or, or United Arab Emirates or Chile or some other country? That they're going to continue? You don't have control over them. So it's, it's more gestural to say we're scared, let's put a moratorium on it, than it is an authentic rule that the world is going to follow. I think if it wakes you up to the possible dangers, that's great. What are the possible dangers of nuclear warfare? Let's talk about it. So I don't see this as a different kind of risk. The letter Neil is referring to is an open letter signed by tech leaders and researchers proposing to delay AI development back in early 2023. With over 1,800 signatories, including notable figures like Elon Musk, scientist Gary Marcus and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, united in a call for a six-month halt to the advancement of systems exceeding the capabilities of ChatGPT4. This plea garnered support not only from these prominent individuals, but also from engineers from tech giants like Amazon, DeepMind, Google, Meta, and Microsoft. GPT-4, an AI creation originating from OpenAI, a company co-founded by Elon Musk and currently backed by Microsoft, has achieved remarkable feats, such as engaging in human-like conversations, composing music, and summarizing extensive documents. The letter highlighted the significant risks posed to humanity by AI systems, boasting human competitive intelligence. Some are so worried about AI, they claim that our current reality might actually be a simulation created by advanced beings from the future. You look at our computing power today and you say, I have the power to program a world inside of a computer. Well, imagine in the future where you have even more power than that. And you can create characters that have, for example, free will or their own perception of free will. So this is a world, and I program in the laws that govern that world. That world will have its own laws of physics and chemistry and biology. Now you're a character in that world and you think you have free will, and you say, I want to invent a computer. So you do. Hey, I want to create a world in my computer. And then that world creates a world in its computer. And then you have simulations all the way down. So now you lay out all these universes and throw a dart. Which of these universes are you most likely to hit? The original one that started it? Or the countless simulations the daughter simulations that uh, unfolded thereafter. You're gonna hit a sim you're gonna hit one of the simulations. So statistically, based on that argument, which first appeared by a philosopher from Oxford named Nick Bostrom back in the 1990s, right when computers were becoming real enough to think this through, it's hard to argue against the possibility that all of us are not just the creation of some kid in a parent's basement programming up a world for their own entertainment. And then every time something weird happens in the world, some disruptive leader takes charge. And I wonder if that programmer just got bored and had to stir the pot. So they throw somebody in there just, to, just to, for their own entertainment. For me, that's some of the best evidence that we live in a simulation. Because this happens every time uh, there's peace and tranquility in the world. If you enjoyed this video, please show your support by liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.